Welcome to the Revolution Will Be live stream. It's TK Coleman. What's up, my brother Kamal? Hey, man, this is going to be a spicy one, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, man, to say the least, brother. Well, you know, at the end of all these episodes, I usually say if there's something y'all want us to talk about, if y'all got any questions, don't hesitate to hit us up and y'all have delivered. The first video we're going to play, which I'm not going to go into right now, somebody sent this video and it's quite spicy. And they said, I want to hear you brothers talk about this. So today's episode is going to be about dealing with cheating, betrayal, and heartbreak. We're going to talk about relationships. Now, for those of you who have been watching our show for a while, you know that we talk a lot about the idea that we refer to as vote for yourself. The notion that you should place more faith in your own potential than in any promises that a politician makes to you about how you can live a freer life. And we're all about the philosophy of freedom. The revolution of one is about the changes that you can make to create not just a freer, freer society, but to embody for society the kind of freedom you believe in. Unfortunately, most conversations about freedom get limited to what some politician is saying or what some politician is doing. And so the tragedy of our time is that when you talk about self-help and personal development, people actually ask, uh, so what does that have to do with freedom? We live in the United States of America where we use this slogan, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then we're completely shocked when someone talks about liberty as if it has something to do with living the good life and pursuing happiness. To talk about the pursuit of happiness, to talk about well-being, is to talk about freedom. It's not just a segue to freedom, it's the essence of freedom. If freedom is not the sort of thing that we can enjoy, if freedom is not the sort of thing that we can use to pursue happiness, why would we even feel motivated to fight for it in the first place? In one of the areas mm -hmm. of life, where people are most oppressed and suppressed is in the arena of relationships. All problems are relationship problems. As Thomas Merton said, no man is an island. And, you know, if we could live by ourselves, we wouldn't have any problem. But the reason we have problems in life is because people don't cooperate with us. People betray us. People lie to us. They don't treat us right. They try to violate our individual rights. They create all kinds of issues for us. And anyone that's interested in living a free life has to develop a philosophy of how they're going to handle the conflicts and challenges that come up in relationships. So. We'll be talking about that topic a lot more, but today we're going to fulfill a request from some of our viewers and talk about what the freedom mindset has to say about dealing with some of the drama that comes up <laughs> when we talk about cheating, betrayal, and heartbreak. Why are you laughing, bro? No, it's just, it's hilarious. I mean, uh, I, I think it's right on point, though. I think, you know, to, to live a life in accordance with your values, to live a life in accordance with your dreams. Um, it takes cooperation from other people and it takes not only you working with other people, but working through other people. And so I think, you know, this is um, an aspect of a broader conversation about how uh, how do you work with people? You know, how, how do I work through people? How do I optimize my life um, by surrounding myself with the right kinds of people? And I think um, there's nobody closer to you, if you have one, than a significant other. They're, they're your partner through thick and through thin, and they're likely gonna be the people who have the most influence on your moods, on your emotions, uh, sometimes on your energy. Uh, and, and I think that this made a lot of sense for me because it's something that everybody can relate to. Everybody can relate to at some point, um, having some woes uh, with a significant other and, and how that, challenges and just changes your life sometimes for the worse sometimes for the better so i'm excited to get into it i think this is a a relevant topic and and, and really anybody can relate yeah man for sure brother for sure so y'all let us know what y'all think about this conversation and if y'all want more <laughs> let us know y'all want more all right so here's the first video this is a video that someone posted on facebook I don't know what's real and what's not nowadays. I don't know if this is a prank, if it's staged. It seemed real, but real or not, it raises a very valuable question about how to deal with 
the experience of being betrayed, which in some shape, form or fashion, we will all experience in our lives. So let's roll with this first video. This is a guy who uh, is, uh, what do you call it? I don't even want to call it a prank, but uh, he's setting up his, his soon to be ex-girlfriend up for, uh, for quite a, a rough moment here. Let's tune in. It's my surprise. No, babe, yeah, don't worry. What's going on? What's don't worry, right? okay? Why am, I why am I blindfolded? Don't worry about it. Don't worry it's about it. Okay, now hold the box oh up. God. Hold the box up. Okay, like okay. this? Yeah, just like that. Okay. Just like that. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, just like that. I'm going to take the lid off now. Okay. Because I'm going I'm to put your birthday surprise inside, okay? Okay. You promise you can't see, right? Nope. Hold on. Mom's, okay. mom's helping me give you the surprise. Yep. Should I do anything? No, no, no you can no. stand right there. Dude. Okay. You're part of the surprise. Okay, hold Hold on. Am I gonna get anything? Do I? Yeah. You got that? Yeah, I got it. Okay. 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 Hold, on, hold on. It might it might spill a little bit, but it's all like little gifts. Whoa. I know. It's crazy. Oh okay. Now Sorry. now rotate the box to the to the left. To, to the, this way? Yeah, that way. That way. Okay. Yep. Oh yep. Just gosh, like that. Big box. Yep. Okay. What are you, you holding a box? Yeah, I'm That's filling her heavy. her box up. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Okay. There you go. There's okay. Excited. Yep. Okay, now what? Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, keep putting your presents inside. <gasps> More? Dude, babe, come on. It's a, <laughs> it's your birthday. <laughs> wow. It's your birthday. Thank you. <laughs> you yeah. I do deserve it. I really good do. Life. Good yep. lights is your good gifts, you know? Okay. Now rotate the box one more time. Okay. Yep, just like that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Got that. Okay, perfect. One second. <laughs> Tuck that right in there. Okay. I wonder what's in here. Now rotate it one more time. Okay. I'm excited for you. I'm so excited. So okay. It's getting heavier. Perfect. Okay, you ready? Yes. You guys ready? What am I supposed to do? What are we... Okay, so uh -huh. I'm going to put the lid back on her box so she can't see. Okay. Hold on. Okay. okay. There you go. Just like that. Right. And then, mom, you got the cake? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yep. All right, one second, Mom. You hold it just like that. Okay. Yep. Okay, let me take my wedding ring off, actually. Okay. Uh, babe, you ready? Yep. I don't know. There's what do so I do? Okay, okay, Mom. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yep. Can I open it up? Nope, not yet. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Happy birthday oh. to <laughs> you. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Serena. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Okay, watch out, watch out, watch out. Babe, I'm going to put the cake on top. Okay, so don't Okay. okay. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And now... Okay, Russell, put down your sign. Put it, put it down? Yep, put it down. Take out that little popper I gave you earlier. Yep. Okay, I'm going to unblindfold you, babe. You ready? Okay. When I'm blind... Do I unblind... Yeah, unblindfold. Yeah? Ready? And then shoot the popper. <laughs> okay. Three... Two, one. Woo! Happy birthday! Oh, oh. Woo! Okay. Yeah! Happy birthday! Wait, it says get out of my house. Babe, I saw you, okay? I saw you with Diego in the, in, in the laundry room. Get out of my house. I already packed your stuff. I don't want to talk to you. Babe, I don't want to talk okay, to you. Just get out of my house. Whoa. I'm going to talk to you later, Diego. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, babe, I saw you. You can't say anything to me, okay? No. You cheated on me. You cheated on me. I For those of you who might be listening to the audio alone, let me just briefly describe to you what the viewers saw. Apparently, I set it up with an inaccuracy. I said it was a, a, a guy and his girlfriend. It was actually a husband and wife scenario. And what you see is the wife. The camera is exclusively on her and she's blindfolded. It's clearly her birthday and she's she has a box in her hand. And on the box is a sign that says, I cheated on my husband. And the husband has her clothes because he's getting ready to kick her out of the house. And he's putting them in the box and telling her these are gifts. She's getting excited. She's feeling the anticipation of some gleeful surprise. His brother is also blindfolded because his brother is apparently the culprit. And his brother thinks this is some cool thing. He's not quite sure why he's a part of it. He's about to find out in the most embarrassing way. And so everybody's excited. And when the husband 
uh, gets to the end. He gives a, he puts a cake on top of the box and the cake says, get out of my house. And when the blindfolds are removed, the girl is excited to look and she looks at the cake, sees that it says, get out of my house. She's confused. Like, wait a minute, what's going on? And then she realizes what this is. It's actually a confrontation. And he basically cuts off any attempt she makes to explain herself like, hey, I saw it. Don't even give me any excuses. I know what happened. Boom, game over. You out of my house. Man, what were you feeling when you were watching that come out? Um, what was I feeling? That's a great question. I think... I guess I was wondering, like, wow, this guy, I mean, this is a very thorough, um, I don't even know what to call it, like a very thorough, uh, whatever he set up. And I just, I just felt like it was kind of a little like gimmicky, like they were all like super happy, like, doo -doo -doo, like, it's my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah. but what I did enjoy about it um, was that like you could kind of tell that uh, his brother and the girlfriend kind of had some rapport. Um, and so like, it, it was just super interesting that like he had his, his mom in the mix who was handing him stuff and then his brother was there and it just seemed like such a messy situation. Um, and it seemed like he uh, put a lot of energy into, into making that. And I think anybody who really goes out their way to expose somebody, uh, they put a lot of energy into that. There's a lot of thought that goes into uh, setting this situation up. So um, both of the people are vulnerable. Both of the people don't know what's happening. Uh, they're getting recorded. This is probably going to go on social media. There's this very decorative box and the little popper. I love the popper, by the way. The popper made the whole moment when he took off the blindfold and the brother like, hey, man. anyway. So um, <laughs> I, I, I think that, you know, say, say I was put in this position and um, I mean, I, I, I I know the feelings, uh, uh, the feeling at the moment that you see something like that when it happens. I think I think they they are just feelings of, and and I guess it depends on the person and, and how they express feelings. But I think for me, it would just be feelings of immense amounts of rage. Uh, it, it would you know just that that feeling of betrayal, that feeling of you know going behind my back with somebody who's close to me. I mean, you're upset at not only the brother, but at the girlfriend and just the whole situation, you know, you were just extremely frustrated. So I think uh, one, it, it definitely takes some discipline that I'll acknowledge to not act out in the moment, to not like go and try to strangle what you saw in the moment, um, but to kind of suppress that anger. Clearly he channeled that into more of a vindictive manner where he's uh, trying to expose both of them. But you know, being in that position, I think you he, he was definitely presented with a choice. Right. I think you're always presented with a choice. Uh, the choice mm -hmm. is whether you um, it, the choice is what you do about it. The choice is is whether you uh, take this to the next step, whether, you know, you, you add more energy to the fire, you add more gas, you try to make it bigger and or you choose kind of the other route, which is removing yourself from the equation. Um, I, I, th I think that's a simplistic way of perceiving this ex experience, especially because they were married. This is family. It's it's a very close knit, messy situation. But what I mean, the thing that I acknowledged the most from the beginning is that there was a lot of effort that went into this. And so I, I guess I question, um, you know, how else could that effort be spent? You know, uh, is, is there a way that he could have channeled that into um, and just into something else, something that was maybe more healing from him for himself or something that allowed him to move on. I think, you know, by making, uh, this social experiment of it and, and, and going out your way to expose, uh, the two of them, I'm like, who does it really serve? Like, yeah, it serves me as the viewer selfishly because I get to laugh and look how goofy they look, but, um, is it really serving the husband, the person who's been cheated on? Um, I, I'm not sure if I would say yes. Yeah, you know, there are certain reactions you can have to somebody disrespecting you that causes the conversation to become more about your reaction than about the disrespect. 
And this was definitely one of those moments because when I looked in the comments for this video, most of them were about the guy and the inappropriateness of how he handled the situation. And that's always going to be a matter of debate, but I, I think it does raise an interesting question about how to handle that experience of, of betrayal. Because like you said, when somebody does you wrong, it it's very, very embarrassing because you're usually the last person to find out. And that means you probably have the ability to look back on some moments where you really played the fool. Everybody else in the room knew what was going on. They knew it, that you were being used or taken advantage of, and you just walking in with a smile on your face, thinking everything's cool. That's really embarrassing to look back on that. And so when someone embarrasses you, it can be very tempting to say, well, all right, I'm going to let you feel the embarrassment that you caused me to feel that, you know, it's, it's going to, mm. I'm going to, I'm going to play defense on this. It can be real easy to feel that way. But the question is, are there good reasons to reconsider? And for me, I don't even want to think about this in overly legalistic terms. I don't want to think about this in terms of like, oh, it's wrong to ever take a stand or be firm or be mean or everything that you do should be nice and polite. Sure. I'm, I'm not one sure. of those guys. And or productive. Yeah, exactly. But but I, I do like to think, think think about things in terms of the philosophy of self-interest. Let's just focus on you and what's best for you. And let's think about mm -hmm. what's best for you in terms that are bigger than the present moment. Because what immediately gratifies isn't necessarily the most fulfilling when it comes to your long-term priorities. Mm. When I think about the breakups in my life, the anger and frustration and mean-spiritedness that I felt in the moment is something that feels so far removed from the guy that I am today. In the moment when I went through breakups, it felt like my whole world was crashing down. Today, it feels like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. That's just a thing that happened. It's just a thing that happened. And there comes a point in every person's life where you are ready to move on and you are ready to let go. And I'm glad that the way that I handle my breakups not as a matter of right and wrong. <laughs> We're not in a way where me and the people involved have to look at it and just relive it over and over and over again. And so I would caution anybody from handling it that way, no matter how tempted you feel, not because it's mean, but because your most valuable asset in a breakup is your ability to move on. And this kind of thing could become an obstacle to your ability to let it go and move on to a bigger and better life. Because ultimately your healing isn't about someone else's hurt. Your healing is about the actualization of your own wholeness. And so what kind of response to my breakups are going to be the most self-interested in those terms? That's how I like to think about it. Yeah, I really like that that point as well. And, and if I could inject kind of a personal note in here as well, I've actually been in a position where I've been cheated on and boy, did it suck. And and yeah. it, it, it's one of those situations where um, I think I transparently talk about it because it was a lesson. Right. Like I, I think like I'm never ashamed about the lessons uh, that I experienced in life or the things that I learned, because I promise you, like it, it, it's, it, it permits me to move differently. It, it allows me to know more, um, about myself, about my partners, about what I'm looking for, about what are the things that I prioritize. Um, so taking me back to in watching this video, took me back to, to the instance that I was in. And what I would say is that in the moment, again, like I, I said, like the, the anger that you feel, I mean, is unmatched. And I think you made a great point. And the reason you feel the anger is because of the embarrassment. It's because of who you identify with as a person um, that I identify. I'm this, I'm that. And when when you, you get embarrassed like that, you know, that that shakes up your identity. And I think off like what, what happened in my situation, and I think maybe other people can relate to this when 
uh, when you're, you know, that kind of identity gets challenged, you immediately go to like what the narrative will be. Like, what will people think? What will people say? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, mm-hmm. now got played. Oh, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think, you know, the way that I retaliated from that situation, I, it wasn't anything like this, but I, I definitely was upset and um, and wanted to like get revenge. And I think looking back, like my desire to get revenge was more so about uh, the narrative, like, oh, Kamau was going to get even, like he got his. So, um, you know, it's all good. Like I could go back and tell my boys like, oh yeah, well I did this X, Y, Z. So, you know, it's all good. I don't even care anymore. But the honest truth was that like, I was doing it for other people. I, I was the act of revenge wasn't necessarily uh, based on my own self-interest and based on, um, you know, the next best move for me. Like it, it, it was a way to, it was, it was a way to try to come to terms with, with just the immense feelings of, of just, Looks like my brother Kamau got broken up. Give him a minute to come back in. But yeah, you know, it's interesting while I'm just here by myself, just kind of picking up on what he said, how our reaction to heartbreak is based on these cultural narratives that we don't question. Okay, there we go. You bet. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, All good. Yeah. I I, I think if I'll I'll just pick back up and wrap up is that... um, I think it's super valuable to think about these experiences about, again, your, your, your own self-interest. And I think at the moment, your self-interest is, is probably going to want to, uh, to react, to respond, to, to, to get even. And, but I think that kind of self-interest is based in like your ego and it's based on what like your narrative is going to be. Like, how is the story told? It's not really about um, what's the best thing for you. And so, that's all I wanted to offer here was that um, a lot of times when you're making these decisions, you're not actually making them for yourself. You're making them uh, for the the audience who's coming to know about the story. Yeah, man, I, I, I just want to piggyback right quick on, on this whole thing about the narrative, because I, I know this is a big deal for guys. I can't speak for other people, but this idea of, um, Hey man, somebody somebody stole your girl, boy. Somebody stole your girl. That that feels really embarrassing. It feels like you got owned and it feels like you got to do something to show somebody else that you are still powerful or that you have the leverage or that you're still on top. And I think a lot of that comes from a very self-defeating assumption. That self-defeating assumption is that the ultimate prize to be sought in life is the affection or approval of another person. And so when someone steals that person's affection or approval away from you or or influences them to redirect it away from you, it feels like you lost. It feels like you lost the prize. But if you believe that that's the prize, you've already lost because the real prize in life is your purpose and your potential. And when another person betrays you or leaves you for any reason, Take that as an opportunity to learn something valuable about yourself and as an opportunity to refamiliarize yourself with the idea that the ultimate prize isn't that person being with you, but the ultimate prize is being with yourself. I heard it said before, I'd rather be epic all by myself than to be lonely or less than the true me with somebody else. And just because another person might think in their mind, ha, 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 I got the best of them, doesn't mean you're losing. It just means in their head that you're losing. But it doesn't matter if you're losing the games that's going on in other people's head. What matters is that you win in the games that's going on in your own. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, man, I I really, we really could could stick with this one all day long. But I, I wanna, I wanna segue into another related question, which is if someone does betray you or cheat on you, should you give them a second chance? Jocko Willink says, I don't think so. Let's hear from what this brother has to say, and then I want to hear your thoughts on it. 
Move on. Straight up, move on. Forget them. They are lying and they are untrustworthy. So move on. Now, sometimes this can be hard, especially if they've somehow tied themselves into your life, especially like for instance, you get the kids involved in a divorce scenario. You you can't move on, but you have to mentally move on. You have to emotionally detach from that human, and that's hard to do because obviously they were someone that you trusted. And the reason I know that you trusted them is because they got to a point where they were able to betray your trust and destroy you. So they they. It's hard, but the fact that they trust that you trusted them, the fact that you had that relationship, that's even more reason to walk away. It's even more reason to move on. You got to see them for what they are, and this is an important piece right here. This is an important piece. This is something I learned as a young lad out there in the world. That person. <laughs> Yeah. is not who you thought they were right they are not who you thought they were the idea that this person was a trustworthy faithful companion is not true it is not true that person does not exist they didn't exist and they don't exist it was in your head it was in your head that this person was trustworthy and you, the, they were everything you wanted them to be and they were a faithful commandant. That is a lie. They are not that person. They have proved it. They have proved it by their actions. So move on and at the risk of sounding callous, get over it. Get over it. Do not dwell. Do not dwell on. Do not dwell on 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 what it was. <laughs> and don't dwell on what it could have been. You, you hear when guys go through bad breakups. You know, it's. I just. I thought we were gonna. It's like no. Don't dwell on that. Deal with what it is right now. What that person is. Deal with reality. Accept reality and be. Be thankful. For reality. Be thankful that you were able to learn before you invested more, more into this person. Be, be, be thankful that you found out when you did that this person was a liar, that this person was unfaithful, was untrustworthy. Be, be thankful that you know it and you know it now instead of later. My man says move on. Here, here, here's what I'll jump it off with. If somebody cheats on you, yeah. <laughs> for, all my, for all my people out there now or in the future that ever finds themselves in a position of being heartbroken or cheated on, and, and, and you're sitting there wanting that person to take you back or, or wanting to give that person another chance, let me just say this. You will never be happy in any relationship where the other person sees themselves as doing you a favor for being in that relationship with you. If you're with somebody who doesn't want to be there and the only reason they're there is because they're doing you a solid man, that is only going to end in resentment on both sides. Somebody told me a long time ago, they said, I don't want nobody that don't want me. On the surface, that can sound like, oh, you're just pretending like you don't like that person because they don't like you back. No, you ain't never got to do that. You can be real about the fact that you like someone and that you wish you liked them even though they don't like you. But you also need to be real about the fact that you can't be happy and healthy in that relationship if they're coming at you for any other reason than that they're really feeling who you are. So don't bet. I say this all the time. You you know, I, I remember one time I begged my wife to watch a basketball game with me. She's not into basketball, okay? But I begged her to watch it with me. 
This was this was early on in our relationship. And so she did me the favor. OK, she watched the game with me. We like one quarter into the game. and She looks at me. She's like, how much longer is this? <laughs> and I had to, I had to beg her to keep watching. Right. So I begged her to watch and I had to beg her to keep watching. And that's what it's like when you beg. And, and I had to get wise from that experience. I said, OK, you know what? She don't really like basketball like that. And that's OK. And that's cool. And this is just one of those ways that we're never going to connect. But I'm not going to do this to her and I'm not going to do it to me because if she's sitting next to me, like I'm just doing my man a favor. I don't want to be here. How much time is left in the game? I can't even enjoy the game. So let's just connect with each other when it's conducive to something that we both can enjoy. And it's like that in every facet of a relationship. It can be so tempting, tempting to manipulate, to compromise, to, to twist arms, to try to do whatever it takes to get somebody back or to get somebody to be with us or be loyal to us. But if you have to give up who you are, if you have to give up your dignity, in order to get that love, it won't satisfy. Never pursue love from a place of self-deprecating desperation. It cannot make mm. you happy. The thing that resonated with me was the importance of staying in the moment, staying present. I think in relationships, one of the best parts about relationships is the memories, right? It, it's, it's the past that you've guys created. It's the pictures you've taken. It's the videos, it's the trips you may have went on. Um, and I think that is definitely something that I've experienced where I, I'm, I'm, I've lived in the past of a relationship. I, it was such a good run. Um, there were so many fun memories, a lot of great laughs that you're tempted uh, to just relive that stuff because it was, it was such, a, such a great time. Um, but I think the most important moment is the present moment, the, mo the moment that dictates the future, the moment di that dictates more uh, memories. And that really is the most important part of your life is the present moment. It isn't the past or and it isn't the future. It's what you do with right now. And I think if you're presented with information that that is really like shattering right now in the present moment, it could be information that happened in the past. Uh, it could be, um, you know, maybe information that uh, a person plans to do something in the future. But all of that really comes down to the present moment. It, it affects, you know, how you're feeling right now. It affects um, how you're going to plan your day, how you're going to, you know, uh, deal with the things that, that are important to you. It, it affects your priorities. And I think it's really just important to to not get caught up on either end of the spectrum, because a lot of times people fall uh, victim to that. They, they fall victim to, to talking about the future, to having kids or to having a life or to retiring or to doing whatever, or on the other side of it, you know, all these cool things we've done. And, and, you know, we had so much potential to be this, that, and the third. And I think the present moment is, is where you're going to be able to find the most wisdom. It's going to be the place where you're, you're able um, to know, you know, is, is this the thing for me? I think the other side of that, though, is that there has to be a certain level of awareness, self-awareness about how you're feeling in the moment. I think, uh, you know, when you're challenged with things like betrayal, um, like like cheating, like heartbreak, like any of these heavy, heavy topics, the best thing that you can do for yourself is take space, is, is to be present um, and, and, and just to like really try to grasp how you're feeling about things how to, and, and and really give yourself as much time you need to digest what's happening in the present moment of course you're naturally going to think about the future of course you're naturally going to think about the past but don't discount and and don't prioritize those things over what's going on right here right now yeah i, I like the way you put that man i think for people that are really, really in love or maybe in a long term relationship where they with somebody who they feel like this is the one and that person cheats on them or betrays them and, and they, they can move too quickly to this question of, well, should I take them back? Sur surely there are some circumstances where you should take somebody back, right? Shouldn't I do that? Look, I'm not going to deny history, OK? I have heard stories. It's not my story, but I've heard stories of people who have been in that situation, they forgave, 
they reconciled and they went on to have what they claim to be a happy marriage. And from all the optics, it looks like they're happily married or they have a happy relationship. So I'm not here to say anything like that is not possible. People do overcome betrayal in their relationships. People do evolve. But I think an important thing to keep in mind if you're ever on the, the victimized end of something like that is to remember that when a person cheats on you, they're putting you through something that you didn't ask to be a part of. And now you need to process that experience for yourself and decide how you're going to integrate that into your mm. own evolution. So even if you do come to the conclusion that you're going to give somebody a second chance, it's not a law, but I would highly encourage you to say, all right, if that's something that I do, I'm not doing that within this time frame. No matter what, even if we do end up back together, we're taking a break so I can process my thoughts, process my feelings, and not make a decision based on desperation, fear of being alone, fear that I can't do better. The fact that something happened is a symptom of a more fundamental problem, and I'm not just going to move on without at least addressing that problem at the at the level of the root cause. I, I got one last thing to say on this, um, and it's it's actually, um, I guess, an adage or just a piece of advice that I, I follow personally and have found uh, just a lot of peace in it. And it actually came from a book called The Alchemist by uh, Paulo Coelho, um, and I, in, in so many words, uh, the adage is like, what happens once um, may very well never happen again, but what happens twice will surely happen a third time. Um, and, you know, people can interpret that how they want to interpret that. Uh, but for me, sure, once, um, and, and this doesn't necessarily pertain, this isn't a hard and fast rule that like, if you cheat on me once, I'm definitely going to take you back, et cetera, et cetera. But I think anything, anything, um, if it happens once, then, you know, it could just be a one and done. It could just be, um, a freak accident. It, it could be whatever that it, it could never happen again. But if it happens twice, I'm a firm believer, uh, that it will surely happen a third time. It will surely happen a third time. Um, and so I think that's been a piece of advice that's made decisions um, much easier for me, I, whether, you know, we're in a situation of a romantic relationship or if I'm in a situation of a professional relationship or if I'm in a situation of just a collaborative relationship in any regard that, um, you know, if, if, if I see a pattern that something's happened again, um, then it, it, it makes the decision really easy for me. Um, you know, I, I know, I know that sure there's a possibility that it could not happen a third time, but why would I take that risk? Like why, why yeah. would I, I, I choose to, uh, to go down that path again? You know, you fool me once. Cool. Um, you fool me twice. That's shame on me. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just not going to go, uh, I'm not going to put myself through something that, um, you know, that 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 is just an increased risk for me uh, to have to go through it a third time. Yeah, I hear you, man. I feel like each one of these could be a full episode. Let's go to let's go to I'm one more. <laughs> this is uh, well, y'all let us know what y'all want to hear more about. So this one is a clip from a Joe Rogan's podcast where they were talking about this idea of uh, relationship failure. If this kind of thing happens, there's a bad breakup, whatever it may be. Did you waste your time? Is that a failed relationship now? Let's see what these cats got to say. This and that. I gave you the best years of my life. Oh, that's my favorite. I did. I did a girl once when we broke up. She said, I wasted all this time with you. I said, oh, I go. I thought we were dating. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you were investing. Yeah. 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 I wasted it. Oh, you wasted it. Well, <laughs> I guess every relationship when it's over is a waste. Like what? That's so bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre way of looking at it. Yeah. Enjoy the present. Enjoy the time you had together. Yeah. But if you're thinking about it in terms of like hitching a run on a successful train. Yeah. If your goal is to get married and you're with someone for five years and then they, you break up like, oh, you know, I should have been with someone else. Yeah. You would, you would have married me. Now I got to find someone else. Yeah. I like the idea of like relationships, like, looking back fondly on relationships. Yeah. I never felt like, oh, I wasted my time. There are people that I've dated that I'm like... Probably shouldn't have done that, but uh, but for the most part, I, I try to uh, have good feelings about it. You don't want to you don't want to hate like a period of your life. 
No, it's pointless. But, and, but there's lessons learned. Those ones that I've had that were like, ugh. That's how you know like what when you date someone and it's cool. When they're, they're good, you get it. Like, that happened to a buddy of mine. He dated an actress. And then it was just, uh, you know, it was br just brutal. Everything was career this, career that. It was about her career. He was trying to help her career. And, and then they broke up. And he's like, I'm never getting married again. A month later, he's with this new chick. And he's living with her two months later. And then he's married six months later. I'm like, what happened? He goes, I, re I realized it wasn't that I didn't want to be married. He goes, I just didn't want to be married to her. He goes, I realized, like, there's some people out there that I get along great with. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't bail on a bad relationship you don't know that there's you can be and you are going to be different that's the other thing like you're di i'm different with different people you're different with something like you react better to certain people and certain people's personalities you jive better with them you have more fun with them it's more entertaining it's you know this th this lesson that they espoused about looking at every relationship as something that made you better, even if it didn't work out. I think people have a difficult time getting that sometimes for, for similar reasons as why it can be so hard for people to uh, accept messages about be grateful for your challenges. I think when people hear, hear words like, uh, or hear phrases like be grateful, they think it means yeah. that you have to be like pretentiously exuberant about bad stuff. You got to pretend like something that hurt didn't actually hurt. And you got to write thank you letters to your ex and be like, oh, thank you so much for contributing to my spiritual enlightenment. And you got to do all this crazy stuff. And that's not what it's about at all. It's about accepting that as a as a sovereign individual, you are consciously participating in your own evolution and that you are going to accept everything that happens to you as an ingredient that can be used in the process of making yourself better. Now, that doesn't mean that you accept everything that happens to you as final and non-negotiable. If something is, is, is unpleasant, if something is inconsistent with how you want to live your life, you can reject it. You can fight against it. You can negotiate it, modify it, whatever you got to do. But I think the message of be grateful, it basically comes down to saying, don't look at a failed relationship as evidence that you suck at life or as evidence that you made the wrong decision, when you know better, you do better. Whatever decision you made, that's based on what you knew, thought, and believed at the time, and the maturity and wisdom that you get later on in life, a good chunk of that comes from the mistakes. It's like that old school temptation song, everybody plays the fool, there's no exception to the rule. Anybody that you mm. look up to and respect has a story about some point in their past when they play the fool and how that helped make them a real self-owning adult. So be thankful for your experiences in the sense of choosing to learn from them. Yeah, that, that that's real. That's real. I, I think I've often been in, in situations where I'm talking to somebody or somebody's asking me for advice um, about relationships and uh, they're, they might be frustrated with an experience that didn't work out, whether it be short term or long term. And they're just like, F this, like I'm single for the rest of my life. Like I'm not doing this anymore. I don't want, uh, like I'm tired of this, like, et cetera, et cetera. And so like that, that's just such a frustrating perspective to me because I think that, I mean, anything that you've succeeded at, did you only try once? Did you only try walking once? And then you fell down and you're just like, oh no. Did you only try walking twice and you fell down and you were like, no, what about three times? What about six times? Like there, to me, there's no, there should be no limit um, on something that you want to have success in. Like if you're about uh, achieving something, um, if that's romantic success, if that's relational success, then, you know, for, why are you stopping? Like, if you want to start a business, I mean, it, you know, are you going to stop because it doesn't work immediately? Like, no, a lot of times people don't even have their best successes till their third or fourth business. Not saying that is the same for a marriage or for a family, but I think the principle is the same is that 
You don't just throw in the towel when things don't work out for you, um, that you adjust. You, you know, I think a lot of it is, is you learn about yourself. You know, you learn about your own preferences. You learn about, um, you know, how can you show up as a better partner? Um, what are the other personality types that might be in conflict with you or the ones that, that work out well for you or the things that are important and the, the things that you're not willing to negotiate? But I think it is a discovery process and that it's foolish to say that I'm not going to play the game and still think somewhere along the line, you're going to get the end result. Like dating is, it's a part of the process. Like just like anything else, if you want the end result, you have to go through the process. And it's frustrating for me when, when I hear that, um, you know, it, it, about people throwing in the towel, because I know other acts, other aspects in their life uh, where they wouldn't do that. You know, they, they would fall down and they would get back up and they would fall down. They would get back up. And and, you know, what what I will say is that I, I get it. I get the emotional uh, the woes that come with that, that it can be really defeating and rattling. Um, and I think there is value in taking some space to figure out what maybe went wrong this last time to really sit and and, and think about it and and allow yourself to process and, and allow yourself to heal and and to do whatever you need to do. But, um, you know, to, to have this pessimistic view on, you know, people that or on yourself, because a lot of times that's what it comes back to is like, oh, I just attract weird people. I'm just this. I'm just that. And I think you know, it, it, if, if that's how you're showing up, stop expecting different results. Like you're going to continue to get the same results. But if you're approaching this with the mindset that uh, that this is something that I, I believe in, um, I, I think like anything else in life, it's just a part of the process. Yeah, man, that's a good word. You know, we see this a lot when it comes to to career. A lot of the the high school students that we work at. Uh, work with tend to put a lot of pressure on themselves uh, when it comes to their career. And the pressure takes the form of there is one right job for me to have. And I just got to find out what the answer is. Maybe if I ask enough adults, I read enough books, I'll find out what the one right answer is for the kind of job I'm supposed to have. And, and, and they're searching for some answer like you, young man. We're born to be a doctor. Oh, thank you for giving me the one right answer for the one right job. And it's it's not like that. There's a creative dimension to your career, right? It's partly about exploring and experimenting with different types of occupations so that you can learn something about yourself. And it's also about understanding that your dream job is something that you get to have a role in helping create, even if it's at an already existing company. There is no dream job if you don't bring a sense of creativity to whatever it is you end up doing in the long run. And I, I think there's a similar principle at work in relationships. Like you can't look at it like I got to go out there and find the one right true person that I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. Because what happens with that is if it doesn't work out, you feel like I don't have the energy to go through that again. You got to approach it like this is a process of discovery and I'm interacting with people for the sake of learning things about myself. Because whatever my dream life is with or without another person, that's going to be something that I create through self-knowledge. It's not something I'm just going to like passively discover through luck. I'm just going to meet the perfect person with no flaws who's just going to be preoccupied with making me happy all the time. And I think going back to the narrative piece, if you go into it, I think a lot of people, you know, they they might see somebody who met their high school sweetheart or they might see somebody who met somebody in college or met somebody at the library or the grocery store. I mean, you can go on and on. Um, I think people want to throw in the towel because they don't want to seem desperate. They don't want to seem like they had to to go through uh, seven relationships before they found the one. Um, and I think that yeah. is the comparison trap. It's looking at other people and trying to define your happiness based off of their lived experiences and how they found theirs. And I think your happiness uh, comes to you uniquely. I think the thing that makes you come alive in this world is unique. It's it's not the same thing as anybody else. And I think the way that you go about it shouldn't be the same either. I think you have to give yourself the permission to find that thing the way that you find that thing. And 
it doesn't come with any fast and hard rules about, you know, you go on three dates and then you ask, maybe we can go out to uh, a more sophisticated date. And then, you know, if that doesn't work, then you defer to no, like th there's, there's not a hard and fast rule for, for what works for you. I think it is a process of discovery. It's a process of creativity. It's a process of self assessment and, and self improvement and figuring out, you know, how can you be better in this situation? Um, but I, I think looking at the next guy or the next relationship and getting depressed with your situation, I think that's the easy thing to do because it's the most apparent. Um, but I think what takes uh, more self mastery, more self control, more self discipline, more self awareness is knowing that I'm on a different track than everybody else. Um, and I think to the extent that you embody that, I think you're on the track to personal freedom. But to the extent that you're worried about what everybody else is doing and trying to keep up and trying to maintain this narrative, you're falling into to the group think. Preach on it, brother. Preach on it, man. Hey, we got one last clip I want to play. I know I know we all about out of time, but we got one last clip that I want to play. And uh this this one came from you, man. It's uh I think it's a nice little um uh what's what's the phrase I'm looking for? A tying of the bow. Uh, around the things that we talked about. If you haven't been in a position where somebody cheated on you, somebody broke your heart, here's some words of wisdom for you right here. To my queens out there that have been cheated on by their men, it's not your fault. Stop making it your fault. To my kings out there that have been cheated on by their women, stop making it your fault. Yes, women cheat too. Now here's the other thing. Sex is one of the strongest forces in the universe that we have to deal with. This is about self-mastery. It's not even about what's going on in a relationship. This is about self mastery, okay? So if you think just because somebody says they love you or you think just because they wanna be in a relationship with you that that means that that's gonna dissolve all their traumas that they come with, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that they're gonna know how to deal with their traumas? Nah, people gonna mess up. So here's the thing, make sure you're with someone that is interested in mastering themselves and everything that they come with. And I know that there's a lot of pain that comes with infidelity, but relationships is a spiritual endeavor. Just make sure you're with somebody who's worth it. Hey man, I'm gonna give you the last word on this. Yeah, I, I, I really like uh, finding somebody who is about self mastery. I think what I think what I've learned from my experience in relationships, um, one of the most important things is value alignment is having somebody who is aligned in terms of, uh, maybe their why, like why they're in the relationship or one of the biggest motivating factors in the, their life. Like they are committed to improving themselves. They are committed to, um, you know, being the next best version. Um, and I think, the way that they go about that should be unique. You know, it, I think there doesn't necessarily have to be um, a lot of similarities between, you know, my profession, your profession, or, um, you know, my family situation, your family situation. I, I think there should be variances. And, and I think that's fine. You know, you hear the old saying opposites attract. I think it makes sense. But I think one of the things that should be in alignment um, is your values, is that overarching goal, is is your maybe life philosophy on how you approach problems? Because I promise you in any relationship, professional, relational, romantic, spiritual, there will be challenges. Um, and having that overarching principle of self-mastery, self-improvement um, to guide you, I think will be so much more powerful than any other force. Uh, through self-mastery, through the dedication of self-improvement, anything is possible. Um, and I think if you're if you can find somebody that's in alignment with that, I think you're saving yourself um, just from a lot of heartache, um, because I think that's one thing that you can trust. If somebody's intentions are, are about that, they're about themselves. Um, you know, I, I think there's there's very few things in the world that you can trust more than somebody's own self-interest. Right. Like people want uh, to, to, to have a better life. People want to develop themselves. People want to realize uh, whatever the thing inside that makes them feel good. And I think you can trust that, you know, if anything else changes in the world, you know that they're in it because they're trying to grow themselves. 
word to the wise, working on yourself is not some kind of consolation prize. It's not some kind of second rate thing. It's really the foundation for any other kind of freedom that's worth talking about. And if, and if you're not willing to work on yourself, or if you don't believe in the idea of working on yourself, what point is there to having any conversation about working on the world, about working on other people or working with other people? Hey, y'all, we are out of time, time, but check it out. If you enjoy this episode, click the like button. Let us know in the comments how you felt. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share with a family member or a friend if you think they'd enjoy the conversations too. And let us know. Let us know if you got any questions or other things you want us to talk about. Even if it's something like, man, I thought y'all was wrong about this. We like that. We enjoy that. We enjoy talking about <laughs> the comments and addressing different things. So, you know, uh, feel free to rap with us. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Peace out, y'all. Stay free.